Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 25th NISPASI annual conference organized on the topic innovation governance in the public sector. It's my pleasure as a president of NISPASI to open this conference and at the beginning I can say also in Russian, уважаемые гости, уважаемые дамы и господа, добро приветствую вас всех на этом открытии 25-й конференции НИСПАСИ по теме инновации управления в государственном секторе. Добро пожаловать! It's honor for us that the main guest of this conference is the president of uh, National Soviet of Tata, Republic of Tatarstan, and also the president of Committee for Culture and Education of uh, Palata Regionov of the Congress of Regional, Local and Regional uh, Self Governments of Council of Europe, Mr. Muhammadjin Farid Harulovic. I excuse me for pronunciation. So it's really very distinguished guests, and thanks to. Republic of Tatarstan yes. for so high appreciation of our conference. I have also to say thank you to Rector of the Kazan Federal University, Mr. Ilshat Ravkatovich Gafurov, for help for decision to host this conference and for providing all organizational and financial resources to run this conference as well as possible. Thanks very much. Yes. We can say that the right hand and the main organizing person is Naila Gumerovna Bagautinova. So thanks very much for all operational reform, uh, efforts. Thanks very much for all your activities. I have also to welcome our distinguished guests from our partner organization. United Nations, Mr. Garegin Manukian. AISHA International Association of Schools and Institutes of Administration, immediate past president, Michiel de Vries. NASPA National Association of Schools of Public Administration in the United States, Mr. David Birzel. And ASPA. American Association, Association of Public Administration, Michael Brintnow. Thanks also to representatives of other organizations participating in this conference. I will not speak longer. I already provided or I already have said my thanks to the university, to the department, this means I can give the floor to Mr. Karulovic. We have worked a unique experience on strategic planning and administration of local development based on innovations and contributions into human resources. And the basis of it is the strategy of economic development of Tatarstan. 2030, which was confirmed by the Parliament of Tatarstan and introduced as a law in 2015. Our five-year strategic plans and municipal plans uh, we confirmed also on this level. Since 2008 and every three years, 
a special innovative memorandum is confirmed and in 2010 the basic law was adopted on activities of Tatarstan in public administration and the economy of Tatarstan is considered as smart economy. From situational management, we shifted to target management. For example, in, in 2016, the share of program expenditures of the budget of Tatarstan uh, on 32 state programs were 96 percent. It's really much. Tatarstan is successfully implementing uh, the policy from raw materials policy to innovation policy. You heard maybe that Tatarstan has such spheres as heavy building, petrochemistry, helicopter constructing, ship constructing, and biggest uh, industries in our republic. And to organize this community in conditions of uh, market is not an easy matter, and uh, there is much to learn more. And it gave us possibility to develop in a more harmonic way, basing on prices of oil on world market, and as they usually say in Russia, uh, not to depend on oil only. But at the same time, we have to use all the expenditures of oil industry in Tatarstan to develop. And the key diversification of industries in Tatarstan uh, are given to special economic zones as Innapolis, Alabuga, clusters, and territories of fast development. Also, such structures work actively as uh, assisting to entrepreneurship, development of techno parks, industrial sites, uh, business and agro parks, and other new forms. Also, it's very important in our economic policy forming of friendly investment medium. Uh, we have a right to say that Tatarstan is in transition from post-Soviet time. Uh, we have learned to work with investments, bank loans, all the financial tools provided by the uh, market economy. Important component of the policy is forming a friendly investment medium, which was already mentioned, and it's clear for adequate accompanying of such changes, we have to have a brand new system of administration based on modern social and technologies project approaches and I would like to underline that according to our experts according to demands this policy is meets the regards and also the big contribution is made by our strategic choice into integrated development uh, of our system such as electronic Tatarstan and its framework we have about 70 projects all the public and municipal bodies work in this system, biggest companies and social organizations registered on the territory of Tatarstan. Over 4,700 such structures are united into um, one electronic database and network. And also one of source of fast sources necessary for development is information and analytical system of economic and social development of Tatarstan. As a chairman of Tatarstan parliament, I would like to say about the comfort of using of mobile offices and serious success uh, of the resource, such resource as Open Tatarstan. I would like to say it more for our students. 
that we left uh, the paper system in law producing and nowadays everything exists in electronic system for each deputy and we have links through computers and internet and we know where everyone is located nowadays and it gives us more comfort and fast work and also there is one more very necessary thing is mobilization of human resources on special IT technologies for solving national tasks and also uh, which uh, and the service of deputies of Tatarstan. One more tool in raising the spirit of Tatarstan is the public control and public inspector, as well as launching of categories in national problematics, labor, security, anti-corruption system, and state purchasing, through the system of state purchasing. And also there is a contribution of such systems of electronic education, electronic healthcare system, electronic culture, electronic utilities, and so so on and so forth. But nevertheless, the key purpose of electronic Tatarstan is supplying as more as possible uh, public services in a system of non-contact way. And I would like to praise the results in the scale of all Russia. On the portal of state services, we can find about 270 services, more than 2 million private cabinets, and about 400 mobile applications, more than 38 million, million services were supplied to citizens of Tatarstan on sum of more than 5 billion rubles, utilities, fines and some other services. And also valuable services are uh, provided by multifunctional centers in local administrative centers of Tatarstan, uh, including in uh, villages, which is also very important for us, because we have about 4 million people population in Tatarstan, about 1.2 of them lives in Kazan, and about half of a million lives in countryside and the rest of them live in cities and towns. And the availability of these services for uh, dwellers of villages, which are spread around on the territory of more than 80,000 square kilometers, is really important for us. And thus, we can economize uh, our time and nerves of citizens. And this gives us possibility uh, to construct the way to less corruption, we are open and transparent. And to fasten the innovation development, we pay much attention to training, management staff, modernization of education. And Tatarstan has an integral system of training, state and municipal services. Uh, we have really nice system of uh, public service personnel service in Tatarstan, and the basis for it is the high school of state and municipal management of Kazan Federal University. As we have a lot of nationalities here, special attention is paid for uh, such competencies as ethno-confessional problematics. And I would like to mention it for our guests that we have here more than 170 ethnicities living in Tatarstan. So we would say that we are 
multi-language and multicultural system. And we always have to take it into consideration in order to escape the strains in our society. To get acquainted with the developed uh, experience, we have such program as Algarish, and le the leaders of uh, public service, they carry out some their grants in different European and Asian countries in the United States of America. And according to initiative of the president of Tatarstan, the leaders, the authorities of management of Tatarstan are usually attending lectures on development of leaders, leading business coaches, including video conferences according to the internet connection. For example, Monday this week, I was involved into such an event as the speech of general director of system of Kiwi, Mr. Saloni, on technologies blockchain for financial medium. Uh -huh. That was really necessary and would be very necessary for our students for many innovations. Dear friends, in, our, in my speech I regarded not many issues on innovation in public administration, but of course it's important that uh, we have very important other issues such as law, regulation of these issues. Um, all the federal laws I apply to Tatarstan according to the articles of constitution of uh, Russian Federation and Tatarstan and we have our own um, laws adopted here in Tatarstan. Everything which is connected with um, collecting all the laws and practice and implementing all the assessment systems, everything are is used in Tatarstan. And I share the opinion that the effective management needs effective expertise. Under the leadership of seven committees of the parliament, we formed an expert committee. We had to do it, attracting many specialists on each direction, including a specialist of Kazan Federal University, who kindly agreed to take part in this project and they still work on it. And training of specialists contributes to better re realization of principle of subsidiarity, connection of uh, federative practices and their transformation into life. And the same, according to the same tasks, we are trying to develop territory and local self-governance and different institutions. Not all countries develop this system, but we are trying to use them in an effective way, attracting population to solving local problems through their uh, private and personal attention. As the chairman has already said, for 15 minutes working in the regional uh, Soviet of Europe, in this situation, I completely agree with European approach. As a coordinator of association of lawmakers of Volga region district, where there are 14 subjects, uh, the chairman of uh, the society in the presidium uh, of the council of lawmakers in russian federation we also can state the actuality of research of the experience of international uh, cooperation between the subjects of federation with other foreign countries and uh, with all of the representatives uh, of all the 84 subjects of federation and the last wish to say, as a potential consumer of uh, uh, your advice to research, I would like to ask you um, to make available proposals 
into uh, political and technology decisions. We, would, uh, we need not only results, but also algorithms and scenarios of their implementation, taking into account the specific of our country. As an illustration of multilaterality of the policy of the Republic, and just for information, I would like to say to you that today Kazan is hosting of the ninth international summit Russia is an Islamic world, Kazan Summit. For the ninth time, we are hosting this event. We are coming famous bankers, researchers of the Islamic world. And we are taking multilateral connections with different banks from Asia. And we are learning how to work in conditions of these banks. With colleagues from Islamic world, we are going to discuss financial investment, industrial halal uh, production. Halal means uh, available for Muslims, which is not prohibited by Quran. In Tatarstan, we are sure that exactly such technologies through closing uh, other parts and cooperation in partnership, they contribute to the success. And once more, I would like to wish a success and fruitful work, exchange of the experience and forming international contents and getting new friends. And I would like to wish you better acquaintance with Kazan and Tatarstan as a whole. And good luck and big success to you. Thank you very much. And I would like to represent the address of the President of Tatarstan to the participants of this 25th Conference of Vespasi Innovation in of Management in Vespasi. I would like uh, to greet you in this conference. Raising the effectiveness of policy is actual nowadays in the world, and also it's very important uh, to have the experience in institutes of uh, Eastern countries where we have exchange of intellectual forms and forms of state and public administration. Uh, and I'm sure that this spirit uh, and development to the open discussion will find its way in the development of these territories and also it will assist to the further international cooperation. I wish you fruitful and interesting work, the President of Tatarstan, Rustam Minikhanov. Once more, I wish you good luck and enjoy the time in Tatarstan, which is on the eve of Cup of Confederation of Football, a World Championship uh, Football next year, and many other events in the life of the Republic. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks very much, Mr. Chairman of the State Council. Thanks very much, Mr. Muhammadchin. Yes. Now it's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, thanks again for a warm welcome by the Republic of Tatarstan. Warm welcome by President of the Republic. Yes. Warm welcome by the Council of the Republic. We are very happy that this conference is so much appreciated by the government of this Republic. And we can just promise that we will do our best to help what was requested by developing of public administration and public policy in the Republic of Tatarstan in whole Russia by providing our data, our knowledge, our developments to support evidence-based policy making in the country. Thank you. Now the floor is for the rector of the university, Mr. Gafurov, please. Uh, 
Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mohamed Shen, dear participants and colleagues and students. Let me wholeheartedly welcome you in Kazan Federal University on this jubileum 25th annual conference of LISPASI. First of all, I would like to say some words about our university, because Mr. Mohamed Shen has already developed the developments of Tatarstan. I would like just to add that it was possible due to the intellectual uh, potential, which is mostly formed in high educational universities located on the territory of Tatarstan. And many uh, authorities, they also graduates of Kazan Federal University. Uh, the university was established in 1804 and one of oldest after Moscow in our country, continuously existing university in Russia, as well as uh, its historical mission with its Moscow brother was aimed at training the staff for public service. And by the way, both of these universities, uh, they were involved in the training the public service managers. One of four departments formed um, at the opening of Kazan University uh, was the Department of Moral and Political Sciences. For its more than 200 length history, the university contributed much into um, the country and world science and education. International fame was brought to university by Nikolai Lobachevsky. By the way, he was director of our university for 19 years, and this year we are going to celebrate the jubilee. A chemist Nikolai Zinin, Karl Klaus, Alexander Butlerov, astronomers Ivan Simonov, physicists Evgeny Zavoisky, Semyon Altschuler, and many other outstanding researchers. Also, here was formation of such famous uh, persons as Leo Tolstoy and Vladimir Lenin. And I would like to say that the the first leader of state government, Mr. Rykov, was a student of this university. And we carry out these traditions. More than 80% of authorities of our republic and of Kazan, the capital of Tatarstan, they are graduates of Kazan Federal University. Our graduates work nowadays in Moscow and the city administration of Moscow and in governmental bodies of the country. Uh, through its long history, the university went through the row of uh, transformation and especially among the existing uh, profiles of training. During the short period of Soviet period, we didn't have such development as humanitarian area, uh, but the list of directions was always expanding till the revolution of 1917. Uh, the university hadn't had some crucial transformation. Nowadays, uh, the university represents both social humanitarian and uh, mathematical development in training. We represent the classical university. And the students of social humanity majors, uh, they are much more. And talking about the history of development of Kazan University, we would like to notice that it had periods both of breaking up into smaller units as well as into Integration. Especially during the Soviet period in 1930s, many profile developments of universities and departments, they became the basis for in independent institutes. Nowadays, they are really huge Kazan high educational universities and research centers. And it's turn uh, from the period of formation of federal university, it was um, the place of integration. 
and uh, the university consists of several high educational universities represented on the slide. Among them, Kazan Finance and Economic University, where we are located right now. Also, we have two lyceums, and since 2016, the structure of university has also clinics aimed at translation of modern developments of our medicine into practice. It's also a very big free medical clinics of Republican level uh, under the auspices of uh, Republican authorities. By now, we have the following structure of the university, and green ones are just newly formed. And the next slide, you can see the figures of the university. We have more than 40,000 students, including, and I'd like to mention your attention, we have more than 10% of foreign students here, more than 700 educational programs, more than 3,000 people of teaching staff, and, and we have more than 11 11,000 people working in the university. And this contributes to making universities one of biggest and multilateral universities of Russian Federation. But we understand uh, that we need concentration of material and intelligent sources uh, as we want to have um, our university to see it at international level. That's why uh, uh, after we learned um, the research Research, uh, all the global challenges, analyzed all the demands of society, business, and the state. So we focused our efforts on priority directions uh, in the spheres where we have the most um, research potential and where we can supply a fast technology development of our country. And um, for recent years, uh, we have uh, transferred to the model of universities 3.0, where not only educational and research components, but also innovation and technology. Uh, the university works um, on different such as uh, we call it sites of technology. Uh, also, we have our own medical clinic to work in pharmaceutical sphere for geology and oil and gas, where we have fields for oil companies and pedagogics, our license and many others. Changing the mechanism of the work of our university uh, is demanded um, uh, by changes in organizational structure. In order to implement uh, this national policy, we have to cooperate with different power bodies, such as both of overseers of the university and the board of Pope Seers um, is headed by the president of the Republic and its decisions are also oriented at raising the potential of the university and its elements. Also, we have our supervisory board, uh, which is uh, in charge of all the belongings of the university and financial sources. The supervisory council is headed by the Minister of Connections and Mass Communication, Nikola, Nikolai Nikarov, who is a graduate of our university as well. And the created direction of program 5.100, it coordinates the university in order to raise its competitiveness and also, we have here the Nobel Prize owner, Professor Yoji Nayori. Our participation in programs of development and uh, raising competitiveness 
has been an incentive uh, to reach new frontiers in scientific activity and presence in global publicational medium. We have reached um, real progress in international ratings. Nowadays, uh, we are on... You have to look at the right side of this slide. So, any changes and changing of titles as well, they are really negative for positioning in international ratings because sometimes uh, people don't have any distinction between state and federal university because in the recent years all, uh, most of institutes in Kazan are nowadays called as universities and this is a difficulty in distinguishing in between. As for our strategic reforms, we are talking about concentration of our resources and efforts. But this is only one side of the coin. Also, other principles for us is creating such medium and such infrastructure where our education would be continuing and integrated into all the spheres of life. That's why Kazan Federal University pays much attention to continuous education and in-service training. We also have centers of training in the sphere of business education, business administration, industrial production and banking, retraining uh, teachers. It's very convenient uh, because we are already training uh, people working on enterprises and institutions who solve the problems existing in nowadays economics. And they are able to translate them into practice and uh, retraining of our students. And one of key directions in this part is training of um, state and municipal services, which are aimed at practical demands of regions and the country. In particular, uh, on the basis of university, the high school of state and municipal uh, public services organized. And also we have really wide international connections with our partners from Chinese People's Republic, from Singapore, uh, from Kazakhstan and from other countries we have connections. Also we carry out uh, competitions for uh, public services service clubs, organize programs for retraining of teaching staff in different subjects, and we have the finance literacy program for the whole population. And if the high school is in charge of retraining and in-service training of civil servants, then uh, training specialists in municipal management, this is the charge of Institute of Management, Economy and Finance. And on the slide you can see different levels. Uh, here we are aimed at new tendencies in management science and uh, to work with our foreign colleagues. Also we have to mention a smaller Academy of Public Management, the program which is aimed at attracting to public service young talents not only from our university but also from other high educational universities of Tatarstan on different subjects. And uh, we work here as an integrator. Uh, those who apply, they go through strict regulations and they, they get education and the science and they can work in any of these spheres. Dear colleagues, in future days uh, we are going to discuss uh, really urgent issues of state and municipal management, budget policy, interaction with society, development of electronic government, intergovernmental cooperation and many others. Um, this is a nice possibility for all participants to share their experience and it's very important uh, in dynamically changing world. And I hope that we are going to have really close links and um, form cooperation between specialists in the sphere of training of public and municipal 
service and we are going to have long-term contacts with our colleagues and our international partners. I hope on it. I wish you good luck, uh, really nice cooperation for reaching our tasks. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, please allow me to open uh, the, this uh, plenary session with several distinguished speakers. I apologize for the NISPASI president who is uh, committed with uh, some official meetings with uh, our official guests so that I do believe he will join us in a few minutes. Uh, please uh, allow me to give the floor now uh, to the first speaker of this panel, Mr. Oleg Pelevin, Deputy Minister of Economy, Ministry of Economy of the Republic of Tatarstan. Good afternoon, dear participants of the conference. Farid Harulovich said a lot about the Republic of Tatarstan, but nevertheless, I'd like to add any, something else with the presentation. The Republic of Tatarstan, during the main macroeconomic indicators, is included into the leading regions of the Russian Federation. According to the GRP, it takes the sixth place. According to the agriculture in the investments, it takes the third place. And on construction, it takes the fifth place. The Republic of Tatarstan uh, takes the leading position according to the main indicators. During the two years in a row, it was taking the second place um, according to the investment climate. As for the structure of the economy, you can see the GRP breakdown by sector. The industry takes more than 40%. The structure of the industry, uh, you can see that in the slide. I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that uh, the manufacturing is increasing constantly every year by 8%. It happens due to the realization of the, ma of the major investment projects. And it is more than 70% that is to manufacture. In the 2016, in the Republic of Tatarstan, we had the positive dynamics of the main indicators, higher than the average Russian indicators. The GRP growth was 102%, and it was $2 billion. The growth of economic activity is continuing this year. The GRP increased uh, in the first quarter of 2017. The economy is increasing due to the strategic, sound strategic management. The strategic planning system was accepted, that is, that has to be implemented by 2013. Th 30, I'm sorry. And um, it has a lot of different aspects. For the, all the people in the Republic of Tatarstan, uh, there was an opportunity to suggest their ideas on improving the strategy. 
The development of the municipal strategy was based on the principle of uh, open and involvement of business and local community. It is necessary to mention that the work on forming of municipal strategies was carried out centralized with the participant of Minister of Economy and the Center of Strategic Research and also with the help of Kazan Federal University. It is also very important to mention that Kazan Federal University played an important role in the strategic planning system at a regional level and at a municipal level. The cooperation with the Kazan Federal University is very important. It includes strategic planning, training of staff, engineering, and many other spheres. Um, cooperation with scientific institutions is very important and it proves the work of public sector. As for other areas in the public sector, we should mention infrastructure and ICT infrastructure. As it was mentioned before, this infrastructure is considered to be very high in the Republic of Tatarstan. By many indicators, we are having the leading position right now. As for the amount of internet users, the Republic of Tatarstan takes the first place in the Volgan region and the third place after Moscow and St. Petersburg. Nowadays, the amount of services being converted into electronic form is growing and the demand for them is also growing among the population. Since during the 2016, we had more than 2 million electronic uh, services carried out, more than 3.5 million payments carried out electronically. Services rendered due to different um, terminals called infomats during the, uh, with the help of the common government portal and with the help of the mobile app of the Republic of Tatarstan working with iOS and Android. With the help of average androids, people can um, can have an appointment with the doctor, can check the school card balance, can carry out payments, can pay their taxes and fares, etc. The next sphere where we are leading is the e-document management of the Republic of Tatarstan. It was introduced in 2006 and for now we have 170 million documents with a volume of more than 400 terabytes and daily more than 365,000 resolutions are being created every day. The system helps us to share documents with the federal government and with the subjects of the Russian Federation. With the help of this system, all the e-document circulation is operated in the Internet and it's very convenient. Also, an open Tatarstan information portal was created, which um, has two different bodies for, the, for citizens and for governmental bodies. It helps to make government management decisions efficiently. The next area is the involvement of citizens into the monitoring of uh, public control. GS system was created in the Republic of Tatarstan where all the citizens can declare information about the violations that are happened in the Republic of Tatarstan. There are 54 categories of requests. More than 16,000 requests were published and more than 11 have been considered. So as we can see, more than 70% of requests are usually handled. The percentage is very high and we are doing our best to improve these indicators. We have also a particular app for uh, road safety. It is called Public Inspector. During the four months, we had more than 15,000 
requests. Citizens use this public inspector actively. In 2015, the 2015 was called the year of parks and squares, the 16th was called the year of the water reserves, and the work is being carried out in all the areas of the Republic of Tatarstan. As you can see in the slide, more than 183 squares and parks had been reconstructed, the embankment. And it is very significant that both organizations and citizens involved in this process. In the slide you can see the example where when people are discussing the project on reconstruction of the park, you can see senior citizens and uh, the youth discussing the common issue. That is just a single example how citizens can form the comfortable environment around them, choosing the projects that are really significant and convenient. And forming of these spaces is of greater importance, and the realization of this project is a very good example of effective interaction between uh, government at the regional level and the municipal level and the cooperation between Grodzian. It's, an, it's no secret that the next step after reconstruction is the social and cultural life formed by the initiatives coming from the people. That is just a very good example. In the upper picture, you can see the park before the reconstruction, and you can see after the reconstruction. The that is the second example, the Aktanishsky district. And the third example is Aznakaevsky district. I'd like to say that there are a lot of examples like that, but I, ha but I can show you only three examples here in the presentation. We had almost 200 parks in the Republic of Tatarstan reconstructed. Also, a self-taxation of citizens initiative was very successful. We realized it the fifth time. And for every ruble spent by the Republic of Tatarstan, a citizen adds four rubles. And all of people participated in the citizen self-taxation program. And as you can see, in 2017, the part of participants in this program is 95%. In the budget of the Republic of Tatarstan, we've planned $1 billion for this project. The money would be directed into cemetery, reconstruction, river, river pollution, construction of monuments, and it is really obvious that if people spend their own money onto the welfare of the state, they will pay more respect to the results. In order to attract citizens to the project, we spend a lot of, we pay a lot of attention to the situation stimulation of territorial public self-government, uh, reconstruction of parks, of um, sport territories, and we also pay a lot of attention to the financing of these spheres. During my speech, I've mentioned only two main aspects, two main areas of innovation development in public administration. First is IT. And the second is involvement of citizens. Moreover, the most important role in innovation introducing is the personnel. Uh, that is the most important topic of, for, the, for the Republic of Tatarstan, and especially for the President of the Republic of Tatarstan. A lot of people have training um, on the basis of the Kazan Federal University. We have, we have something to compare with. 
we know that we have a lot of experience on training and retraining of personnel for the public service. The next point that should be mentioned is that we set objectives, in particular for the authorities working with the public administration. It means that every civil servant knows that the quality of work that he provides means that he will get this or that amount of award. The system works more than 20 years, and we also introduced the system of project management. It has been used during the such events as the, uni the University Aid, the FINA competition. This system is used during the construction of large industrial and sport objects. We also introduced the system on forming the forecasts of the economy development. In general, I can say that there are a lot of different spheres for open for innovation, and that is why we're always in the process of studying and learning. We visit different countries, we visit different um, places in the Russian Federation, sharing and getting new experience. I think that we will get a lot of new information, and that will help us to increase the effectiveness. I wish all the best uh, to all the participants of this conference. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation and uh, uh, for this, uh, I do believe, very valuable information about your economic growth, but uh, also in the connection with uh, all these uh, innovative uh, approaches and uh, connected also with the need of uh, uh, innovation governance. So that's, I think, very, very well fit into the scope of now our uh, conference. Uh, let me now uh, to introduce uh, the next speaker, uh, the mayor of Inopolis. Uh, Ruslan Shagaliev, who is going to present a special case of a, a newly established city, if I understand well, and uh, which should be a very good example of such uh, innovative approach in governance. Thank, Thank you very much for introducing. Добрый день, уважаемый президиум. Good afternoon, the Presidium and participants of the conference. Good afternoon, the students. How are your exams? Uh, have you started your passing your exams? Okay, I wish you good luck. Do not applaud so much. <laughs> One girl has waken up. Thank you very much for invitation. I would like to tell you about the city of Innapolis. First of all, for our guests, uh, the guests of Tatarstan. Um, I hope that more or less uh, most of our people know about the Innapolis. First, I would like to tell you about the IT industries. Uh, you know that the IT industry is one of the fast developing industries in the world. And on the chart you can see the percent ratio of GDP of different countries regarding IT economies. So you can see that there is a task to be reached. Uh, we have only 2.8%, and our generation has to change this situation. This is our task, and this is the world trend. And global needs in human resources uh, by 2018-19 will be 26.5 million people. And this major IT uh, changes from hard skill to soft skill, uh, knowledge of different languages, uh, literacy, and these skills are necessary in many spheres of our life. 
And the next chart shows us the external competitiveness for human resources. You can see here the countries, recipients, uh, red one recipients and blue ones are donors. You can see that Russia alongside with China, they are just the cradle of human resources. And these human resources are looking for better life, especially high qualified uh, human resources We are living for the US, UK and some other countries. And the task is to create centers of attraction in Russia in order to um, allow the young specialists and families wanted and had the possibility to stay in our country and develop our economy and um, develop the IT industry. Some figures, some more figures. In the U.S., uh, for their working life, uh, families can change uh, for about five, six cities. And uh, for them, it's easy to move from one city to another. But in Russia, only now it becomes a trend, uh, especially among IT specialists. Uh, he is not connected directly. Uh, he is extraterrestrial, I would say, extraterritorial. And nowadays, some information about the Innopolis itself. And later, I would like to connect two parts of my presentation and will explain why I started with this topic. The city of Innopolis is located about four kilometers from Kazan. In the picturesque site where the Sviyaga River flows into the Volga River. And many of you have been there before um, the complex was constructed, and we have here the ski resort. About the transport accessibility, we have here um, in the distance of 1,000 kilometers, we have 10 uh, from 15 biggest cities of Russian Federation. So this uh, 1,000 kilometers is a comfortable distance because of which every family and citizen can move uh, to Innopolis. And nowadays, Innopolis consists of three majors, the university, and we have uh, more than 500 students, and 180 of them this year are graduates. And, uh, and we are going to have 250 applicants. All in all, the capacity is 5,000 students. Next major is a special economic zone, the center of business activity of city with preferences and tax relief uh, for investors and residents in high technology spheres of economy. So then, uh, and the third major is the friendly environment for life, for living. As the practice shows, many young families and specialists, they enjoy moving to this city where there is its own comfortable housing system, not very expensive kindergarten, a school and all other infrastructure. So the heads of families can be involved into their work. Uh, develop their skills, earn their money, and their families may be next to them in a comfortable environment. And some figures about our city. Its area, its total area is 1,200 hectares, but still developed only about uh, 5 hectares, but the city is quite young. This year, on the 9th of June, we will going to celebrate the second anniversary. Nowadays, we have about 3,000 people population, 2,000 of them are constant residents, and uh, about 1,000 thousand people are daily coming from Kazan or Zelenodolsk to work here.
Несколько слов про университет, особенно я думаю, студентам будет интересно. And some words about the university, which especially this information would be interesting for university. We have here all IT specialties because the university is narrow, specialized on IT spheres. We have here software, robotics, computer graphics, safety of computer systems. Everything is taught there in English. That's why that's why about 40 professors of the, the university, they are foreigners who come here and live either in Annapolis or in Kazan. And we have here zero profit tax, road tax, land tax. Also, we have low insurance premiums, and also we have some loan interests as preferences. We have about 50 companies' residents in a special economic zone. Especially want to mention Yandex. Uh, for our saving bank infrastructure. ICL develops the system of Microsoft Office. And the Tatastan company uh, from ICL, also Kaspersky. Akbar's group from Tatarstan. And you can see some other companies, and you can find the information about them on our site. By the way, Tinkoff opened its representative office here, and he's looking for head of office. You can send your resume to our site, and we are glad to have your applications. Uh, good and available housing. We have more than about 700 flats. Half of them are already inhabited. During May and June will be become inhabited completely. We started construction of new neighborhood. Until the end of the year, we are going to have brand new um, housing for new specialists. And rental cost is 7,000 rubles for one flat room to 10,000 rubles for two flat room. Uh, all the necessary city infrastructure is developed. We have 21 bus routes from Kazan and back. Nowadays, so far, they are free of charge. We have city services. We have a restaurant, a bar, where students spend their evenings. We have quite nice sports venue, a healthcare center with unique set of services for such a unique settlement. So in general, we take care about uh, welfare and joy of living and rendering and having all the services in the city. Talking about the beginning of my presentation about the outflow of the stuff, we are regarding the service as a city, as a city as a service. Uh, we imply environment of city would be friendly for other people from other cities and countries uh, to come here to earn their money. And then it turns into our revenue of companies' residents and their staff. Now we're talking about the modern city. It's not just a set of premises, territories and functions. It also uh, goes as a city and modern product. We have four landmarks here, Annapolis as a start-up, Annapolis as a service company, uh, Annapolis as a citizen, as a client here, and, and a brand new conception, which is implemented. 
has been implemented for one year, Annapolis for you, from city for, for all of you, to city to everyone. And also attraction of, we are trying to find the way for each sector of citizens of the city and find the scenario of their interconnection with city, with services, what they need, what is necessary, what they would like to improve. Uh, the services through tax of individual person ranking. So we can see uh, the revenues of each citizen here and also the loyalty of citizens and virality of city services as target key performance indicators. So how can we find the feedback about the city? So we have different focus teams and now we are regarding the topic of our conference, innovations in public sector, how we intercourse with citizens through the messenger app Telegram. We have more than 100 uh, teams, groups of interest in the city. Supernapolis is a super group uh, including citizens uh, and those who want to live in Annapolis. We have about 1.5 thousand citizens. We have kindergarten, uh, sports team, university group, housing group. Also, we have uh, meetings of citizens of every utility and uh, where they get the counter ratings and some. We also have some call centers, for example, 24 and 7, where everyone can call an address through Telegram Messenger or email. And also the service works as a service of one shop. You can apply for foreign passport, for registration, whatever. In the future, we are going to get about the behavior model of our citizens uh, for close circuit TV, sensor counters. Also, we're developing the system of housing with our smart sensors. In, in order to economize sources, we also want to get information about the way our services are used in the city. Uh, we make into segments, divide the uh, population into groups. So I've already mentioned everything, but slides are going on. So also we're having a complex index of happiness, which we research also. Also, we work with people who didn't like the conditions or working place in the city, so we keep working with them. And when they are leaving, we try to uh, have their feedback uh, in order to get the information what was done wrong and how to improve the system and functioning of this city. Everyone is welcome to Innapolis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, your presentation and uh, very interesting information about this uh, innovative approach uh, to um, improve in uh, in this targeted area. 
Uh, now we can move to the last presenter of this session, uh, Mr. Manikian. Manukian, Manukian, <laughs> excuse me, uh, who represents here United Nations, a Division for Economic and Social Development, and he would uh, present us uh, um, the information and knowledge uh, um, gained by the UN in uh, the area of uh, innovation, innovative and innovation governance. So please, floor is yours. Thank you, Ludmila. Just because I have to speak uh, from my seat, I broke my glasses and need to take a look at my notes from a closer distance. Sorry about that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I am delighted to be here in Kazan and greet all of you on behalf of the Division for Public Administration and Development Management of the Department of Economic uh, and Social Affairs of the United Nations Secretariat. <laughs> Allow me to start also by expressing my sincere gratitude to the organizers of this event, NISPASE, and its host, the Kazan Federal University. My division has enjoyed long-standing collaboration with NISPASE in the area of public administration capacity development. Therefore, I am very pleased to be able to participate in this conference, which will contribute greatly to the discussion and understanding of the imperatives of governance and public administration in addressing the many challenges that the world is facing today. The main, the main theme of the conference is innovation governance in the public sector. Indeed, identifying innovative approaches for making public service delivery more efficient and accessible, as well as less costly for governments and taxpayers, is not only relevant, but crucial to the improvement and reformation in the delivery of services. We all know and agree that improving the delivery of public services has been critical to the uh, achievement of MDGs. More so, it will remain critical in the pursuit of the Sustainable Development Goals. Exactly two weeks ago, the United Nations Committee of Experts on Public Administration concluded its 16 sessions, session at the United Nations headquarters in New York. What prominently came forth during the deliberations of the committee was a consensus that ensuring the effective implementation of sustainable development goals can only be achieved by developing a balanced and integrated approach executed with the help of appropriate institutional arrangements as the SDGs uh, bring back to the fore the central role of governments at the national and local levels. Because the SDGs are long-term objectives, the experts also underscored the importance of planning. Uh, institutional leadership and its interaction with the society, which will determine the success in the implementation of SDGs. Without this, SDG implementation is under risk. A need to support and equip local authorities, as the critical role of local governments for the SDGs cannot be overestimated, mostly because action at local level is a primary engine for development and realizing the SDGs. And last but not least, the need to elaborate the principles of effective governance. For these very principles could and should guide countries to think about feasible governance improvements, considering each country's capacities, context, and culture. However, while national circumstances and priorities may differ, there is much which is common to all aspiring to fulfill the SDGs, leaving nobody behind. Let me recall that just a few years ago, we had been exploring the role of public administration and innovation in public administration with a view to the uh, achievement of, of the MDGs. 
uh, within an unstable environment characterized by the volatility in the global financial markets and strict budgetary constraints at all the levels of government. The forces of globalization were rapidly evolving and progressing in the background. Precisely against this background, a consensus was then re uh, reached that the role of effective governance and public administration was absolutely cr crucial in overcoming challenges and meeting new requirements. Accordingly, my question is, what has changed since then? It is my understanding that the international community has established even more ambitious development goals and that, and that the implementation of this new all-inclusive development agenda will need to be undertaken in a more complex uh, environment characterized by regional conflicts, proliferation of wars and escalating uh, confrontations between states. In the challenging environment, you will agree that the implementation and achievement of SDGs becomes a daunting task because uh, for practically all countries, though of course the developing countries uh, being more challenged and at risk. So what has not changed, however, since the earlier MDGs is the critical importance of governance and public administration in advancing development programs. And why is that? Because regardless of system of government, public administration is the necessary mechanism through which governments must pursue the objectives of sustainable development. Therefore, there is no doubt that sound public administration, institutions and human resources development are needed for sustainable development. An effective and professional public service is central to uh, capacity building and institutional reinforcement. UNDESA in this connection attaches great importance to the need for, re for a reassessment of the strategic role of the public service profession. Its urgency and importance cannot be overstated. It should be capable of creating an enabling working environment, one that inspires, engages and motivates both public servants and citizens, while it also guaranteeing a value-based leadership culture, without which the public service will not be able to deliver on a people-centered sustainable development agenda. We may conclude that one of the chief prerequisites in terms of the SDGs is sound governance. Governance that is based on effective, efficient, responsive, incorruptible, professional, accountable, creative, and of course innovative public service staffed with professionals that will be able to transform the policies and strategies guiding the economic, social, and environmental pillars of sustainable development into tangible results. I confess, understandably, with great res uh, regret, that when I try to uh, grasp current developments worldwide, I cannot rid myself of the feeling that things uh, have changed dramatically, in unexpected ways, actually. What in the recent past was considered good and positive nowadays is seen as wrong. What was considered a vice, all of a sudden acquired a new and positive meaning, being tolerated tacitly or even promoted. Many people take a view that there has been an erosion of values in many societies and that public administration service being the microcosm of society has also been impacted negatively by such trends in major way. In light of this, I hope that this conference, which targets public policy educators, policy makers and other stakeholders, will explore ways to reverse these negative trends in society and the public service in order to safeguard democracy and good governance, but also ensure equitable and reliable delivery of public services. Only in this way can we build citizens' trust in government, ensuring the achievement of SDGs. 
And there is no doubt that strong public service and public administration structures are needed for sustainable development. And so is capacity building, human resource development, and institutional reinforcement. I believe you would agree that this is hinged on positive behavioral and mindset changes among public service personnel, the most critical facet of public administration reform. Values make public service productive and committed to fighting corruption, one of the strongest impediments of sustainable development. In integrity in government calls for assuring transparency, accountability, and responsiveness. It also puts the citizen in the center and acts as a guarantor of inclusiveness and broad national participation. And last but not least, difference between being an expert, being qualified, and being professional. Professionalism goes beyond possessing mastery over knowledge, skills, and competence. It has to do with character, commitment, attitude, striving for excellence, competency, and integrity, both in behavior and ethical conduct. Of course, the personal values that underpin integrity must be supplemented by organizational and societal values and principles that uphold ethics in the public service. And in this connection, the institutes and schools of public administration, without uh, any doubt, have a great and major role to play in preparing this transformational change. On this note, hoping that one of the outcomes of this auspicious conference will be more training programs, I wish to welcome you all and to wish us fruitful discussions. Thank you very much. So, we have two awards now in this session. So, I have to excuse, but I will tell it in a little bit special way. We start with Junior. And as indicated, also very senior level at the same time. And it's Mziani Kelaza Award for PhD paper. Uh, the committee evaluating these year proposals was Stanka Setnikar Sanka from Ljubljana, Karim Intera from Cluj, Romania, and Michiel de Vries from Nijmegen because he's the most distant and most distinguished as a vice uh, pres former president or still acting, uh, uh, former president of Asia, we kindly ask him to present basic information and to present the award. Thank you so much, Mr. President, organizers. You know, going to Nispesi is wonderful, not only because they're always in beautiful places, but also because there are so many PhD students and just graduated people here. And that gives you a glimpse of the future of public administration. And that makes me very happy. And together with Professor Stanka uh, Setnikas, and Professor Kalim Hintea, we were allowed to give our judgment about on a PhD thesis that were published last year. And the winner is Ms. Pirat Tanus from Tallinn University. And then the question is, of course, why? Well, one of the things is that she did a research and investigation into energy technology innovation systems in a transnational perspective. Small states, public ownership, and diverging policy rationales. And it's about state-owned enterprises and their role in governing the energy sector. And she did very good research, you know, the rigorous multi-method approach applying cumulative theoretical and systematic review techniques, 
single and comparative case study analysis, network analysis. It's a whole bunch of analysis and well performed, well conducted. And not only did she uh, finalize her PhD, but it was based on four original articles. And they were published in reputable academic journals like Technovation, Annals of Public and Comparative, Cooperative Economics, Administrative Culture. And that makes for a very good PhD thesis. And the nice thing is that it's about innovation. And that's the main subject of this year's conference. So that's why she's also the keynote speaker. A very young, energetic, good researcher that is doing this. So I congratulate Piret Turnerwis for winning the Mia the Zia Mikelas Award. Congratulations. I don't know if there is a photograph. Why, why do you ask me if I don't get on the picture? <laughs> But the floor is yours, I think. Just a remark or short notice for those who don't remember Mzian Mikalaze. Mzian was former president of NISPASI, doing a lot for our organization, doing a lot for developing of public administration in Caucasus region. And she unfortunately suddenly died much earlier before she was able to finish all her ideas and tasks. So, Mzian. So thank you very much for having me here. Actually, I'm not going to talk about my PhD. Uh, it's, as all PhDs in Tallinn University of Technology, it is freely available online for you to consume, read, uh, or do whatever with. So I'm also asked to give a keynote speech this year, which is, uh, as Jura said, very exceptional. But it relates to my work as a researcher practitioner. So I'm also an international public servant. Uh, in addition to working for the Tallinn University of Technology, I also work for the OECD as uh, in the public sector, Observatory of Public Sector Innovation. And in that organization, I lead the work on system change, system thinking, and new methodologies for analyzing innovation governance, the main theme of this conference. Uh, also the innovation, public sector innovation measurement effort, and also evidence-based uh, uh, innovation um, solutions for government. So this is going to be a more general reflection about where this topic is going today. So a little bit about uh, the observatory itself. So it was established around 2013, but the full team uh, emerged basically, uh, got together basically last year and at the OECD. Uh, we cover three main topics. Uh, basically covering what's next in the public sector, field of public sector innovation, uh, exploring the ways to turn uh, public sector innovation the new, uh, into the new normal or disseminating the work, and also providing trusted advice to foster innovation in the public sector in general. Basically, my talk is going to be about one stream of the work the observatory does, and this is the work we do on global trends. So the observatory collects cases from around the world on public sector innovation, and you can also go on the website of the observatory. Uh, I think it will be kind of an input for research in itself, that we publish uh, case studies on public sector innovation. And once a year on the World Economic Forum, we discuss uh, the emerging trends uh, in the global field in public sector innovation. Uh, this is our latest report, Embracing Innovation in Government, Global Trends, published in uh, February 2017. And there are also some uh, cases uh, mentioned here in the slide deck that will be made available to you later on. 
uh, one of the most interesting cases would be kind of uh, an example of gamification and com competition among uh, citizens itself. This map had come from the Mexico City, where in the Mexico City area, the public bus routes or the public transportation routes did not exist. So everybody basically had the right to, after a minimum licensing uh, procedure, to go and drive a bus in the city of Mexico. So nobody had kind of the bus routes itself. So the huge metropolis of Mexico uh, City was facing a challenge of how to map all these bus routes, how to kind of provide even time schedules to its citizens on where the infrastructure was moving. So they used an app-based uh, game uh, where which turned out 4,000 uh, players or citizens played and downloaded to map the routes of uh, all the kind of licensed bus, uh, bus routes. And it took only a couple of months for these 4,000 bus, uh, bus drivers to, uh, to provide the maps and develop the data for 40 million individuals, uh, 40 million individual rides per day that uh, constitutes the Mexico City public service. So I would say that indeed public sector is at the precipice of change, is at the kind of the beginning of change. And I'm very glad to see that there are so many young people in the auditorium because I would argue that those young people who are sitting here and listening to the conference see the public sector in a different way than you or me or other people do because the way they experience the world is totally changing. So the way they consume information uh, through platforms like Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter is, uh, is changing. And they expect also the same change from the, from the public sector in terms of how it communicates, provides services to its citizens. So the expectations of the new generation of people are totally transforming in terms of what is expected from the government. So with the, also the technological change, the complexity of what the public sector in terms of its problems is changing as well. So we are facing an era of sped up change that problems are becoming more dynamic, faster. Of course the public sector has faced problems throughout uh, decades, but in terms of the speed of change, the quickness that the public sector has to respond is changing ginormously. In terms of migration, in terms of demographic changes, in terms of climate change, in terms of flooding, uh, sustainability related goals, uh, things are moving up in speed. And of course, one of the main things that facilitates this stage is the transformation and the nature of technology itself, that we have a digital transformation on our hands. We have algorithmic government, we have big data, we have uh, artificial intelligence, we have machine-to-machine uh, -machine coordination, we have a different way to organize our lives. So technology is not only changing the way we or citizens perceive the public sector, or where the way we, the government is trying to create apps or other kind of marginal responses to technological change. The technology will change also uh, the way public sector itself is organized. And this is a very important topic to analyze for PA public administration scholars all over the world. And I would say that um, this is crucial that uh, we see this change as innovation scholars already happening in the private sector. There's a time lag to change in the public sector because, of course, there's no market forces to tell the public sector that they need to change. But change is imminent. So, one of the pressures that will lead to this change is that the younger generation sitting in the chairs will indeed start to expect a different way of uh, doing, uh, doing business from government. And not only as service users, but also government as an employer. In terms of what we expect when we go work for the government itself. So young people today do not, have not lived or had their first work experience outside of government 
in very hierarchical structures or uh, have uh, flexible working methods, have uh, ways of experimenting with technology and new approaches that they also expect when they go and work for, for governments now. And I just uh, came back from Canada, uh, where the OECD is launching, launching its first uh, public sector innovation review uh, of the federal government of Canada. And there, doing interviews, we learn from innovators that the burnout rate of public sector, new public sector employees is around five years. And I am testament of that. I spent five years in the public sector before I left, joined academia, and then went to work for the OECD in a sense that people come in with um, transformative ideas, ideas how to change the world that it, it, it is now. And the public sector, as it is now organized, grinds you down. You either conform or you leave. But going back to the first idea that we are at the precipice of change, we are at the beginning of the new era. So can government afford to let go of the talent that before it leaves? or start searching for the talent where the change is imminent itself. Furthermore, governments uh, where the change is happening now, not in terms of uh, how government is organized per se, but also the change in tools government is using to analyze problem problems. One can argue that in core business, uh, governments do not apply design thinking or experimentation or behavioral insights. Uh, or uh, 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 data analytics, but uh, more and more governments are actually doing it. So more and more governments are experimenting with new ways of doing things, with uh, using ethnographic methods to understand what the users want. And uh, in general, there are two trends in the, in the public sector. One is kind of a top-down approach where we use these tools to tell the public, uh, the public in general what they should do, or we try to kind of paternalistically manipulate the, uh, the civil, um, uh, civil society into doing what we want. And one would put this kind of top-down approach into the field of behavioral economics and, and others where we'll try to nudge uh, citizens to go in certain directions. But on the other side, there is a kind of bottom-up approach, bottom-up trend that is moving forward with design thinking, with systems thinking, and other tools that empower citizens in terms of participation and collaborating. But here as well, I would be very vigilant as researchers in the field of public administration to really follow how kind of technological tools that tend to be user-oriented or pretend to have collaborative effects, how they're actually in practice affecting who gets what, who is the winners, who will uh, get the final value uh, out of the public service uh, that is changed to collaborative methods. And of course, we are at the precipice of a huge demographic change also in Russia, also in the uh, overall region of uh, Central Asia, but also in Europe and elsewhere in the world. This is, to a degree, alleviated by migration. But again, there are much, there are huge trends against the migration itself and cultural uh, issues and barriers to it as well. So, with demographic change and push for austerity because of our systems cannot cope with change uh, as it's coming, I would argue that governments cannot spend their way out of complex problems. And I would repeat again, you cannot spend your way out of complex problems. So this means that you have to implement changes, new innovative ways of doing things, new ways of collaborating and producing value together with citizens to actually reach the outcomes you want. So just a little bit of uh, change is imminent in very simple statistics. It's in terms of this graph will show that the number of people actually doing business or contacting government in terms of uh, online forums filled out on, with uh, via public authorities increasing by number every single year. So the young people are getting older and we are becoming more tech savvy as, a, as overall generations. So the way we do things in the public sector is changing rapidly. 
coming back to the kind of the new talent uh, that I uh, mentioned before, the public sector, conservative public sector innovation has done some work uh, in the field of what kind of uh, skills are expected from public sector employees and innovators in general. And we have uh, outlined outlined six core skills uh, in, in the area uh, that are necessary for public sector uh, servants who want to be innovative in this uh, new world of complex problems. And these are iteracy, data literacy, user-centered diversity, curiosity, storytelling as a new method of uh, kind of providing narratives why change is necessary, and also insurgency. And I think uh, also insurgency as it's such is, is something that is quite difficult for public sector organizations to tolerate, even in countries where they have uh, great agendas in terms of public sector innovation. Because it has to allow public sector employees and civil servants to actually say to their managers, I think we need to do things differently. And if the reaction is that we have a work ban that we held, are held accountable, we are only allowed to do things that uh, are not um, are expected of us, then we will not reach the results that uh, are necessary in the public sector today. So what needs to change in the public sector to go through this uh, change period? So first of all, going back to the insurgency point, public sector organizations need to make room for positive deviation. So a huge change in the management practices of the public sector is, uh, is expected. And in general, uh, I would say that in the private organizations we already see the disappearance of middle managers in terms of ICT making the hierarchies of uh, digesting information unnecessary. In the end, you will have kind of the street level bureaucrats, data crunchers on the user level and you have decision makers at the top level, because optimization in general will mean that uh, a lot of jobs in the public sector will disappear. And it is expected that the disappearance will happen in the kind of middle management area of the public sector itself. So the way we do innovation, the way we uh, look at problems from the user perspective uh, is also kind of rooted in the kind of change in the management practices and organizations of the public sector itself. And another topic is to how public sector has so far kind of approached the idea of public sector innovation. So it's, it's the idea of centralized or de decentralized innovation activities. And in most countries so far, in the, at least in the OECD, countries that we have most data on, have uh, developed hubs and public sector innovation labs to kind of have an organizational response to the problem that they're facing. And it is good to a degree, in the sense that it uh, pulls together all these people that think, think in a different way. It creates a critical mass to uh, push the agenda forward. But on the other hand, we see from the practices of the hub, hubs and labs and innovation teams is that due to their kind of distance from the core activities and operations of government, they are pushed away from uh, core big topics of uh, governing that uh, need to be changed. So we predict that in the future there will be a more wider general approach to public sector innovation in the future. Not the disappearance, well, some disappearance of innovation labs in the public sector, but also the activities have to kind of decentralize into the, the fold of the public sector itself. Another area is bringing in new talent. Uh, that was, I, I talked about in general for a very long time already. Uh, but this is a difficult topic, as I said, that five, year, five years is the maximum burnout rate for people that expect to work differently but do not find the circumstances within the public sector. And very simply, time and money. In the sense that we at the OECD see a lot of rhetoric and discussion over public sector innovation, but we don't see a lot of investment of time, resources and money in it. So I would 
kind of uh, direct you as researchers to also look at how much resources public sectors are actually spending in this field because nothing will come out of nothing. So I've hinted at these topics before, but how could the public administration research help in this field? I would say that uh, the most important thing that the public sector is facing today is the question of how. So not only the question of what innovation is or what should be done, but how it should be done. So how to make decisions under uncertainty, how to implement these projects, how to collaborate, how to have a unified uh, processes, how to make organizational changes, the question of how. Uh, also, uh, the next big thing would be the organizational strength, uh, a change in structure and innovation in the government itself. And this will come slowly, but it will come. And uh, another area that I would hint at would be kind of action-oriented uh, research itself in the connection to the first question of how. Uh, another area that kind of evaluators and impact uh, researchers should look into is the question of sustainability and long-term impact in innovations. Because a lot of fuss and a lot of coolness even is associated with innovations. But so far we haven't seen uh, any long-term studies in terms of how these innovations are actually impacting people, how these innovations are um, sustainable in the public sector, uh, how these innovations benefit some people but do not benefit others. So this is an area that needs a lot of input from you. And also uh, a topic that is going to be the next uh, great theme of our Global Innovation Trends uh, Review is cross-sectoral partnership of innovation. Because government uh, in the 21st century does not govern alone, so it governs with uh, private organizations, it governs with citizens in co-production, co-creation, it governs with NGOs in civic organizations using many, many different tools and contracts and ways of doing things from agile development to to iterative development, to social impact bonds, to others. So this is a topic definitely to um, take a closer look at. I will skip the slide, it's uh, just to indicate that we have 19, well this is uh, innovation entering the HRM frameworks in the, in the governments of the OECD countries. But to conclude off with the observatory itself, what we're working on now, is the Global Trends Review and the Systems Thinking Review, the innovation life cycle in the public sector, the skills and capabilities work that I mentioned before, and also being trusted advice. So uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, I just came from a flight from Canada, that where we started our first scoping interviews of the first public sector innovation review of uh, Canada and the federal government which will look at the public sector innovation on a systemic organization on an individual level and should come forth in, uh, in March 2018. So, Valshoi uh, uh, um, if you want to get in touch with me, then do it, uh, we're very open, then do it uh, directly. We'll also have a conference uh, at the end of November, on the 20th and 21st of November, at the OSC in the in Paris, so follow our OPSI newsletter, we will give more information about it, but we'll expect that there will be some 500 innovators plus researchers from uh, approximately, looking back for the last conference, from 50 different countries to talk about these different issues. So, uh, Thank you very much.